Who would have thought in a million years we would be getting a prequel to A New Hope or as most people like to just call it Star Wars. And now we actually get to see how everything unfolds before Star Wars. Hey there everybody, this is 22TigerDude here and I'm here to review Rogue One, a Star Wars story. So Rogue One, a Star Wars story is directed by Gareth Edwards and the film stars Felicity Jones, Diego Luna, Donnie Yen, Forrest Whitaker, and many more. So Rogue One, a Star Wars story is about when the Galactic Empire builds this super weapon known as the Death Star, which can destroy an entire planet. And so with that having everyone worried, a group of these rebels known as the Rebel Alliance go out of their way to steal the Death Star plans in order to save the galaxy. So I was actually very excited for Rogue One, A Star Wars Story. I really when it comes to these spin-off movies that they're planning, this is really the only spin-off film I really care about, unless once they announce an Obi-Wan Kenobi spin-off film, which I really hope happens, because I really want that. But in the meantime, this is really the only spin-off film they're planning that I actually care about, that I actually do want to see. And Garrett Edwards, I thought he did a very impressive job with Godzilla. I actually am a fan of Godzilla. I know not everyone is, but I was personally a fan of it. And I couldn't wait to see how he could handle a Star Wars movie. And I have to say, after seeing Rogue One, A Star Wars Story, I liked it. It was a very worthy prequel to a truly fantastic movie known as Star Wars. And since I already just talked about Gareth Edwards, I might as well just start off with the direction. I thought he did a very beautiful job directing this film. Like, this is definitely a dark Star Wars film. This is definitely not light, like with, say, Star Wars The Force Awakens. There are definitely dark moments in that film for sure, but most of it's really lighthearted. Rogue One is really the opposite of that. Um, it does have its humor for sure, mainly when it comes to the character K2SO, but it really is such a dark and depressing atmosphere that Gareth Edwards created and I thought it worked. He really brought me into this world. Obviously with the Star Wars film, you know, you gotta have your action and man did he do one hell of a job with it. Like wow, every single action sequence in this film was very exciting, especially with the climax. I gotta already just say it, Gareth Edwards directed the hell out of the climax especially. The climax is like 40 to 45 minutes long. I think a little bit less than that, I'm not sure, but it is a very lengthy climax. And obviously there's a reason it had to be lengthy because all of this builds up to Star Wars and how Gareth Edwards just directed it was so impressive. It was exciting, but it was also very emotional. And that's the thing too that Gareth Edwards really nailed. He really nailed the more dark, the more um, just dramatic moments. And it created a lot of tension because of that. And as far as the script goes, I know one of the writers of this film is actually Tony Gilroy who was brothers with Dan Gilroy. Him, as well as other writers, did a really good job of tying all of these things up to Star Wars because that's what you need for a film like this. You want everything to tie in very well to, you know, the film that started off this universe. Where this film ended that does lead up to Star Wars, it, it came together very well, and I'm sure it was quite a challenge on the writer's part to make sure that they tie as many things as possible leading up to Star Wars, but I thought that they did definitely pull it off. I thought that the dialogue was very well done too, and I thought the characters, while I will say maybe not the strongest characters in the Star Wars universe, I did still like them, I did still care for them. And speaking of characters, Jin Erso, the main character 
character of this film. I did really like her. I thought she was very interesting. I did get behind her story and how this film opens regarding her story I did think was very cool and I have to say that Felicity Jones did a really good job portraying her. I did really like the character a lot. Same with Diego Luna. Diego Luna I thought was also really good in this film. Really liked him. Uh, Donnie Yen who might be my favorite character in this film. He is fantastic. He is really, really great. He really does steal almost every scene that he is in. He plays this blind man. He was very compelling as far as characters go. I am pretty sure I'm gonna mispronounce this gentleman's name, but Win Jian, or Jiang, Jiang, I think that's how you say it. I also really liked him. I thought he did a very good job for the film. Um, really, there's no weak performance at least in my eyes. I thought the performances were honestly strong from everybody. Even if the characters don't have that much depth to them, I think the actors do a very good job of making these characters pretty interesting. And I know everyone has already said it, but I gotta say it too. Alan Tudyk as K2SO is really good. I really liked him. He's definitely the one that brings the most comic relief because this film is dark. Like, that's definitely the overall tone of this film. They're going for a more dark vibe so whenever we do cut to him it is nice to get some of that to prevent from this being like a completely completely dark film I think it absolutely worked but not only was he the comic relief but his character did serve I feel importance to the story without spoiling anything it was very well done as far as that goes visually this is a very great looking movie and that really should be no surprise at this point when it comes to Star Wars film but it really is such a visually stunning movie. There's so many visuals that are very impressive. They even have to recreate characters that we would see in Star Wars, like Star Wars 1977. They would have to recreate certain characters. And I will say um, the visuals on them, I didn't think looked too bad. Yes, could it be just a little bit noticeable that it's CG? Uh, sure, but... I did really like them though. The score here in this film I thought was really great too. Definitely does fit the Star Wars world. Considering, yes, it's a more dark Star Wars film, I do think the tone really fits for it. But when we get to the more exciting moments in this film, the music really does help it a lot. And cinematography too. Whoever did the cinematography in this film really should give themselves a round of applause because the uh, cinematography in Rogue One really looks so impressive. The saturation to make this more gloomy looking Star Wars film really did work. Especially in the climax. The climax is definitely where I feel the cinematography stands out the most. And of course, this is not a spoiler, but Darth Vader is back. Only for a couple of scenes, however. He is barely in this film and when I say barely I really do mean he's barely in this film however when Darth Vader does actually show up it is so freaking awesome and the fact that James Earl Jones actually came back to do the voice of Darth Vader I thought was so great so yeah Darth Vader Th those scenes were truly awesome. Definitely some of the best scenes when it comes to Rogue One for sure. And I actually did buy the Rebel Alliance as a team to be honest. Like yes, they don't have the strongest development to them or anything, but I did buy them as a team. I did just like the characters in general and I really did root for them. That's why the way this film ends without spoiling anything, even though you can really expect where the film is going to end, it honestly did still hit me in the feels. Like, I actually did feel that emotion because of how much I did like these characters. And I respected them because they really were willing to do anything for the entire galaxy. Now, as far as flaws do go with Rogue One A Star Wars Story, there are some times where the pacing can drag. I do think certain moments do drag on a little too long and they really could have picked up the pace. Most of it is very well paced, definitely, don't get me wrong, but there are just some of those moments where, yes, I did feel it was a little slow paced at times. 
Also, I've been saying in this review, these characters don't really have the strongest development to them. Now, I can understand why, because when you're out on a mission, you really don't have time to sit around and talk and learn more about one another. I totally get that. But I do think it would have been nice if we got to learn about these characters, like their backgrounds, where they come from, how they start. Like, you know, they don't have to give us like every single information possible, but I think it could have been great to learn more about these characters. Like Diego Luna in one scene says something about how he's been fighting since he was like six years old. That's the most we know about Diego Luna. But I think there could have been something for the film to do in order for them to have more depth to them, I feel. Also, there's a reason I didn't really bring up Ben Mendelsohn in my positives because while his performance is good, he did do a good job with the performance. It's his character. I didn't really care for him. His character was just so bland. He is the antagonist of this film, and like I said, he just really wasn't all that compelling. And honestly, he just came off more as a wimp than he really did as being this threatening villain. He's not threatening at all. And I think a lot of work really could have been done when it comes to him. There can be times where the visual is just a little bit noticeable, particularly when it comes to recreating characters from Star Wars. Like, it's not anything like too, too noticeable. Like, even though it's obviously CG, I still thought overall it's very well done. Like, I stand by what I say. It is very very well done, honestly. But it can be a little noticeable that it's CG as well as other moments where I'm like, okay, that could have been polished a little bit better. Also, I really like Forrest Whitaker. I really do like him a lot as an actor. But I gotta be honest, he wasn't good in this film. I don't know what they did with Forrest Whitaker, but my god. He felt so out of place. And not to mention that they just basically waste his character. I'm not gonna say how, but his character is not even in the film that long. And they really could have done more with Forrest Whitaker's character. The character himself could have had better writing too. I just really didn't find the character that interesting. And Forrest Whitaker's performance, unfortunately, did not help it. He was not very good here. Not to mention that there's even an octopus scene that came out of nowhere. It's like an octopus that reads minds and I'm just going, what the hell am I watching? Just what the hell is this? So yeah, that was a bummer right there. I was looking forward to seeing what Forrest Whitaker can bring to this film. Unfortunately, not that much. Overall, I liked Rogue One, A Star Wars Story. I think this is a solid Star Wars film. I thought it did a very good job of tying everything together to Star Wars 1977. I do think it serves as a worthy prequel to that film. The visuals are stunning. The world building is really great. Gareth Edwards did a very great job of bringing this dark tone. I do like the characters, even if there could have been more to them. I did still like the characters. K2SO was a great, great character. And Darth Vader, you know, for the scenes that he did have, it's truly just great to see. I'm going to give Rogue One a Star Wars story three out of four stars. So you guys, in the comments down below, let me know what did you think about Rogue One, A Star Wars Story. On Facebook and Twitter, I did ask you guys to predict my rating for this film. So if you predicted my rating right, you're going to get a shout out in this review. So on Facebook, Justin Moore, Justin Watches Movies, Oscar De La Rosa, Oscar the Movie Guy, Joe Cabemella, Josh Adam Mothra, Joe Tufano, Nate Ploof, aka Stupid Beagle Reviews, Kevin Falk, Mark Bedois Jr., It Is Raining Blood, and 
And as far as Twitter, Rachel Wagner. So thank you to everyone that predicted the rating. That was really great. So everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here. And don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power.